I'm just glad everyone's here this morning. We've got coffee and snacks over there. We've, uh, we've got a great day. It's going to feel a little different. Um, our sermon's not coming from Keith this morning. Our, uh, our proclamation's going to come from David Brown, uh, Sarah Tippett, Catherine Medford, Annabelle Lamar, and um, Beverly Brown. And, and we're lucky. A lot of you w- will know who they are. Uh, in the beginning of their talk, it's not going to be a lot of introductions about who they are, but in your bulletin, there's a, there's a quick little write-up about those, those who will be um, uh, sharing with us this morning about their life here at First Methodist and what stewardship means to them. Um, as we enter into our Rise Up um, stewardship uh, campaign that's going on right now. Um, this is going to be a fun morning. I know it's a, a holiday weekend. we got some people who are gone, uh, but we're going to bring some high energy this morning. And I appreciate all those who got to hear the uh, rehearsal this morning. Sorry we had a little technical di- <laughs> difficulties for some of you. It's the second time you've heard a lot of these songs, but we're glad you're here. Let's all stand up. Now... This song right here is not, this is not a song that, 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 vol, that volume is the only thing that matters in this song. <laughs> pitch doesn't matter. And I know usually when you hear us, you probably think pitch doesn't matter all that much anyway. But pitch doesn't matter and the things that we go on. This is just a time for us to be able to share and, and to sing out here this morning. So sing after me. There is no one like. Can we hear you? That's weak sauce. That, Come on, guys. That was weak. All right. Let's see if we can get you to help with that one. I'll sing, and then you sing it back to us. There is no one like. Let me hear you. Right. That, was still, that was pretty good, and I know it's 840. I know it's 840. That was I better. It, I know it's cold. What's that? And my guitar, my guitar is loud. And I appreciate everyone who's given me the Bob Dylan went to electric. Uh, all those those tweets, those have been fun. Uh, Steve Steve Ellis sent sent some fun videos to me as I wear this. But so this is going to be one of these mornings where we're really going to use the electric, and we really have to get loud. So let's see. Hey Ray, I think they're a little. I think they might be a little nervous. Can we just turn the house down lights just a little bit? So because maybe. That they can't see each other yell to one another with that. All right, let's try that. So we go, there is no one. Let me hear you sing it back. There is no one. Let me hear it again. There is no one. Let me hear it. There is no one like you. You are more beautiful than anyone ever. ever. Every day, you never change, you never change, no, never. You are more beautiful than anyone ever. ever. Every day, you're the same, you never change. How could I ever deny the love of mine, the Savior? You are to me, you're everything, you're all I need forever. How could you be so good? There is no one like you. There has never, ever been anyone like you. Nothing there surrounding. I'm not alone. Never sing a song. My God, your love's so astounding. How could you be so good to me eternally? Cause I believe that there is no one like you. There has never, ever been anyone like you. There is no
brother. Here it is. It's the part where I'll sing and you sing back. I'll sing, how good you be, how could you be so good to me? Well, let that be our worship this morning, our call to worship this morning. His words. How could you be so good to me? Let me hear you. How could you be so good to me? How could you be so good to me? How could you be so good to me? We're not alone. Sing along. We're not alone. Sing along, sing along, sing along. Here we go! There is no one like you. There has never ever anyone like you. There is no one like you. There has never ever been anyone like you. There is no one like you. There has never been. Good morning. I hope you guys are awake. You all may be seated. And here is our King. Here is our love. Here is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one. He is Jesus. We sing, Here is our King. And He is our King. He is our love. He is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. From wherever to arise to heal the ground. From wherever searching comes to look itself. Trace of what we're looking for to be quiet now and wait. The ocean is growing. The tide is coming in, and here it is. And here is our king. Here is our love. Here is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. And He is our King, He is our love, He is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. What was said to a rose to make it unfold? Said to me here in my chest to be quiet now and rest. So be quiet now and rest. In the ocean. is coming in, and here it is, and here is our King, here is our love, here is our God who's come to bring us back to Him, He is the one, He is Jesus, Jesus, and He is our King, He is our love, He is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. Jesus. 
Cause our God has come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. He is our King, He is our love, He is our God has come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. kindness of a savior the hope of nation savior he can move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Yes, I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Let the whole world sing. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. That's Jesus. Shine your light and let the whole world sing. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we give thanks this morning that we can gather here in your name and that you gave us the greatest gift that we could ever receive in your, your Son, our Savior. God, we just pray that we can open ourselves up to His love and that we can shine your light around the world. In your name we pray. Amen. A thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, 
Well, I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all things. remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fame my heart and my soul well I'll give you control consume me from the inside out door let justice and grace become my embrace to love you from the inside out remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine with all else faith never ending your glory goes beyond all pain my heart and my soul well, I'll give you control consume Justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine with all else's face. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all praise. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the Children will come up front and join Miss Rachel. Good morning. Hey, everybody. All right, you'll see I brought a couple of tools with me this morning, a couple of props. Hey, souls. And you, you've, a lot of you have probably seen this happen before, okay? So don't spoil it. Don't spoil the surprise if you have. But, um, but even if you have, I, I'm going to see if I can get you to think a little bit differently about this science experiment today. In this cup, I have some baking soda. Can you see it? It's white. And um, I just poured a little baking soda in this cup. I want you to think of this baking soda. Imagine that instead of being baking soda, this is all of the things that God has given me. It's my time. 
It's my talents. It's my, um, my love, my friendship, my money. Uh, this, is, this is all that God, imagine this is all that God has given me, okay? And it would be really easy for me to walk around with this cup of baking soda and hold it tight and say, it's mine. It was given to me. It's mine. I'm going to keep it to myself. But watch what would happen if I take all that God has given me and I give it to God and I add God. I'm going to use my vinegar to represent God today. Okay, so watch what happens when I mix together all the things that I have and God. Let me see. I'm going to try and do this without the microphone. Did you see that? It grew so much that it overflowed. Look, the, the, the tray is wet, and, and I hear it. Can you hear it? Something's happening in there. It's not just like mixing water and baking soda. No. When I added God to all that I had, it grew into something even more than I imagined it could. And, and it's moving. It's bubbling it's overflowing. What if I just put a little bit of baking soda? Do you think it would still happen if I only have just a little bit to give? I'm going to put a tiny, tiny bit of baking soda and see what happens. Can, can God still grow this little bit of baking soda? Oh, my goodness. You see all those bubbles? I put the tiniest bit of baking soda in there, and God still moved it, grew it. And so God calls us, he gives us all of these gifts. He's given me a wonderful family. He's given me so much love. He's given me friends. He's given me time. He's given me a job so I make money. Um, And he's given me all of these things, and he asks me to give it to him, to use him to grow for his good. So let's pray together and ask God to help us think of all of the things that we have and help us give it up to him, to help us us live generously. God, we are amazed by all that we have. We are amazed by the life you've given us, by the love that we have, the the time that we have. Um, And and we know that it's such a gift, um, and yet sometimes we think of, of it as we think of ourselves as having so little and I ask you now to remind us to to um to encourage us to use what you've given us for you to remind us that you can do amazing things with what we have amen As our children go back to their seats, we'll ask the ushers to come forward as we give our gifts back. I will rise out of these ashes. I will rise from the trouble I found to the rubble in the ground. I will rise. I will rise out of these ashes. I will rise from the trouble I found to the rubble on the ground. I will rise because, oh, he who is not me. Than I'll ever be, and I will rise. Yes, he, he is not me. Greater than I will be, and I will rise. 
my heart is on the ground And hope is nowhere to be found Love is a big man that I once knew And I hold on to what I know is true Oh, I will rise out of these ashes I will rise from the trouble I found Through the rubble and the ground I will rise Oh, I will rise out of these ashes I will rise from the trouble I found Through the rubble on the ground I will rise Cause he, he was not me coming to this place and I don't know how to fail so I lay down my life and hope to die and that somehow life I rise oh I will rise out of these ashes I will rise from the trouble I found to the rubble on the ground, I will rise. Oh, I will rise out of these ashes, I will rise. From the trouble I found to the rubble on the ground, I will rise. Because he, he who is not me, is greater than I will be and I will rise. Yes, he, he who is not me is greater than I'll ever be and I will rise. Good morning. This is time in our service when we pray together as a community of faith. We lift up those who need our prayers, and we certainly lift our praises up to God and give thanks for those. So how can we pray together this morning? Yes, Laura. Okay, yeah, let's pray for Martha, Patrick Bradshaw's sister, starting chemo, so, and she's here. We'll be praying for you. Yes, Peggy. Betty Bumgarner in Kings Mountain just had some heart surgeries, some cardiopulmonary surgeries, and we want to pray for her. She's Peggy's friend. And prayers for Linda Grasty over in Maggie Valley, who's also kind of struggling with a health problem with some pulmonary issues. So let's pray for, for Linda as well. Let's go to God in prayer. 
God, we give thanks for this day and all the many things that, that you bring to our lives. And God, we just pray that we can open up to you and, and let you in. As we enter into this season of Thanksgiving and then a Christmas, God, help this be the time that we, that we rededicate ourselves, that, that we think hard about how we engage with you. Make it more about just being here and just being present, God. We pray that, that there will be inspiration in our heart, that we'll, we'll take that next step and, and really engage in your ministry in and, and every single way that we possibly can. God, we lift up to you this morning, Martha, Betty, Linda, and all those who need our prayers that are battling health issues and help them all to know that that you're the greatest support that they could ever have. God, we pray for them. We pray for their families. God, again, we give thanks for all the praises that each one of us have, all the great things in our lives, because they all come from you. God, we ask that you be with us this week, and you help us to understand, God, that without you, our lives would be so much less. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Our scripture from today is from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands, and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses, and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery." We're kind of thinking about this stewardship season, and you heard the scripture about standing, in essence, on the shoulders of the people before us, and we've kind of talked about a little bit about, during this time, about what's come before us and where our church is going, and it's very important. You know, this church has been here for quite some time. I've been here 40 years now, at least, and it's, been, and it's gone through a lot of changes, And you guys are the reason that I am who I am today, so it's your fault. (laughs) So you you guys get all the credit for this. So in thinking about the gifts and the blessings that that we've had, they asked us to come up with this this visioning panel, this stewardship team, and kind of have a discussion and talk a little, little bit about that. And I wanted to think a little bit about, well, what's this church done for me? And to speak to someone who will remain nameless, but years ago was an instrumental part in starting this pancake thing that they have here at First Methodist. And so in talking with her, we're almost, you know, back in the, that pancake day started in 57. And at that time, our church had about seven, eight hundred members. And they started, they decided they wanted to buy this parking lot next door. And if you can think about that time, That was a $15,000 expenditure, and they were finishing up the educational building, which was about $190,000, $200,000. Back then, they had the vision for what we still have today, and the programs, and the children, and the youth that have come through that educational building and are sitting here, sitting here, sitting out there. That was a big deal back then for 800 people. And then... That person that will remain nameless started Pancake Day in 57 to pay off all of the things that were going on with the educational building. And that was done in 59. 
And now I think back in my time, I grew up in the 90s, and we had 10 to 15 youth, I think, at that time that came at a dedicated Sunday night. And the church took that position to say, okay, we're going to hire a full-time youth director. Something that's not been done in, in Haywood County at that time. They took the position with that small of a youth group, we're going to have a full-time youth director. And look where we are now. They had that vision at that time to project forward to know where this church was going to be. Now, we're also 25 years to the day, or the month, I think, for when the sanctuary burned. And look where we are. All these things that go in to the blessings and to the gifts of First United Methodist Church. And just like the scripture talked about, we are drinking from the wells that people have laid long before we ever got here. And we need to continue to refill those wells for, for my daughter and for futures, future generations that come to First United Methodist Church, for this church, this community, and this world. And so they've asked me to moderate, and, and my time is done. Sorry, Steve, I won't talk any longer. I know, you're, I know you're concerned. So I want to talk a little bit about now about some of these blessings that our families have received. And uh, Beverly Brown slash mother, what kind of blessings have you received, <laughs> your family received from First Name Methodist Church? Thank you, Mr. Brown. Yes, I am his mother. Beverly Ballantyne Brown. I was baptized in this church, confirmed, married, wonderful church family. Then I became a single mother, and I realized I needed that church family even more. And my boys, I wanted them to have that support and those loving hands and control. You know, they needed it. So I came to the Sunday school, and there was a lady by the name of Mary Hell. We used to call her the Sunday school lady. And she could get the devil to volunteer at church. <laughs> so from 10 to 12, while my guys were uh, in the toddler to four-year-olds, I worked with that group, 10 to 12, every Sunday morning. And then continued, they grew on into Sunday school and others, and I did earlier in some of those. And then they became youth, as David has alluded to. This church started a youth, or dedicated and hired a youth director. So the circle keeps going. We have daycare, Sunday school, youth, and they had retreats and wilderness trail and lock-ins and all kinds of things like that. Also, Mary Hale that I had mentioned before started Bible Times Marketplace. You all know what that is. And when it began, she is kind of like Jesus in the fishing line and she hooked us in to help. When the first time we started it where the driveway is, the playground wasn't there, I don't believe, at that time, we had tents and tribes and here on the side in the grass, we had PVC pipes with sheets hanging off of it for the toddlers, the four, three, and two-year-olds that could handle it. But look what it has developed into now. Vision from this church. We had a vision, but you had to have support, volunteer and monetary. The youth director hired a designated youth director. Vision and support. And they had their own area when this CGC was built, their own area for youth. Wilderness Trail, we supported that. We still do. And I'm very happy because my youngest son, Alan, worked there in the summers and met his future wife, Mary Wood. Then the circle keeps going. And back in the back, particularly you guys know about it, this is the... There's someone here that calls it the happy clappy service. I have a little granddaughter, Sloan, and she, standing there with her mom, Mary Beth, and her dad, David, is clapping and singing all along. But this is continuing, and it's because of this church's support and the vision that they have that it continues on and on. And I, for one, truly appreciate that. 
Now, Catherine, I know you've got some young adults like my age, you know, because I'm, I'm the same age as your kids. So talk to, a little, talk to us a little bit about um, the gifts that you've received here at uh, First Methodist Church for your family. Wow, the gifts go way back when I was a little girl. I, I have just recently joined and become a member here. But as a little girl, my dad would bring me here for Pancake Day on my way to school at Central. I was raised in Haywood County and raised down the street in the Episcopal Church. Um, I know what it means to, to give. Um, however, this church has given so much more to me. I also want to say I am a daughter-in-law um, to Boyd and Nancy Medford, who have been long-term, long-time members of this church. Um, I am the mother of Alex, Nancy, and John. And, wow, the gifts that this church has given to me and these three kids is beyond measure. Um, when my oldest daughter, Alex, was probably 7th, 8th grade, my husband was diagnosed with a terminal Ill, illness, and her friends all came here to youth. We, we, at that time, were members at a different Methodist church in town, and, but her friends, her main friends, were here. And I thought, okay, uh, we got to get her here because she's going to need it. So that began the long journey of youth for our family. And my youngest has just now, he's in his third year in college. And, but all three are still so involved with this church. But the youth has just provided so much stability for my kids. The opportunities to travel, to give, to share, the mission trips, the, um, the student internship, the ability to, to see how a church works and, and the, everything that is provided through a church. It, it went beyond youth. It went into their college years. The scholarships received. Um, when you're going through life, you never know what's going to hit you. And boy, were we hit. And there was a need. I wanted my children to carry on with these wonderful experiences and people. And so the gifts were, at, were there to provide for my children to join in these these trips and opportunities, and even into college, the scholarships my kids have received. It's just beyond words. So, And these gifts, they flow outside of this church like you were talking about. So, Annabelle, and I was reading your bio, Annabelle, and it says you work for this Wilderness Trail <laughs> Company. And how have you seen in your experiences the gifts from First United Methodist Church work outside of these walls? Well, Wilderness Trail... Er <laughs> you got me on Wilderness Trail. Uh, this church supports ministries like Wilderness Trail. And when I started working here um, a few years ago, I realized that I couldn't keep up with how many ways this church was involved in our community. And I still can't today. Um, we have such a reach uh, here in our community and beyond. Uh, we, we impact people, our children in Armenia with our Project Agape Christmas boxes. We support programs like Read in Ecuador. Um, because of the gifts of, of this church, we can do youth mission trips, and I've been on mission trips with the youth uh, in areas of the southeast here, and um, just locally, what we support, uh, we send uh, people to, for the Kairos Prison Ministry, we support Wilderness Trail, we support the Pigeon Center, Open Door Ministries, the list goes on and on. Um, but my favorite thing about this church is that we are, because of the gifts of this church, we are able to look at what we have and how what we have can meet a need, a need in our community. Uh, yesterday morning I was at the Friendship House, and uh, that's a, something kind of recently, that has recently started up, and that was just people in our church that said, we have space in the Friendship House where we can have a food pantry and we can open up the showers for people that need them. And it's amazing to see how that, how that ministry is taking off. And that was just us saying, this is what we have, this is what we can do uh, with that. Um, we have a, a great kitchen over here that is 
used pretty often, but uh, there are certain nights where the kitchen was not being used, and so we were able to open up the kitchen for organizations like Kids at Work to use, and uh, mothers who are staying in the family dorms at Haywood Pathways Center, they can use our kitchen, and they can uh, learn some life skills and how to cook, which is just super important for them. Um, the gifts of this church allow us to have programs uh, free of charge like Music Makers, Youth Music Lab, and the After School Program. And nothing says that we want you here and you're welcome here more than welcoming that many people in at a time. Um, the After School Program started because the principal at the time said, the biggest need that we have is a safe place for students to go after school. And it wasn't something that we had planned for that year. It wasn't necessarily in the budget, but uh, we knew that there was a need, so we got the resources and the staff together and we opened an after school program. The youth area wasn't being used after school on weekdays. And so seeing from the beginnings, uh, seeing the after school program start um, and where we are now, uh, last Thursday we had 93 students uh, at in the youth area at after school and it's just amazing because not only I mean that's a lot of students but so many of those students would not have ever come through the doors of our church otherwise if we would not have opened up the after school program um, and I've seen firsthand some of the staff at our after school program really be there for some of the students who uh, maybe would slip through the cracks in some of the some of the resources and uh, things Available to them, whether available to them, whether that be through the school or other organizations, we've been there for them, and uh, that's a way for some more positive adults to be in some of the students' lives. Um, and one of my favorite things about it is that uh, most days of the week, Matthew will grab a group of of youth, and they'll go to different ministries or organizations in the county, like Meals on Wheels or the Pigeon Center or Haywood Christian Ministries. And they are being the hands and feet of God. And they are learning what it's, really feeling what it's like to catch the joy in serving and live for something greater. And all of these things that we are able to do uh, at this church are because of the gifts that we have. I believe that the church exists to meet needs. And because of the gifts of this church, we are able to meet needs here in this community and beyond. Now, Miss Sarah, I see you over there shaking your head. You I, agreeing with what everything Annabelle's saying. How have you seen it outside of the pecans? How have you seen um, the gifts from this church go beyond the walls and into our community? When Hardy and I became involved members at First United Methodist Church, our ministers were always reminding us, go into the world serving, making disciples, take church out of the building as you have done it unto the least of these you have done it for me one summer jane baker decided we would take church out of the building we would take vacation bible school to central elementary school which is now closed but first united methodist continues to support many of these children in various ways so we took the Vacation Bible School to Central, and it was an exceptionally well-received experience funded by contributions from this congregation. From that and other encounters at Central, it was determined that there was a need to provide weekend food for some of the school children. And with the help of the Rotary Club, the backpack program began. The youth of this church packed the backpacks and every Friday a team of volunteers would deliver those backpacks to Central distributing to various classrooms. Well, from that, the need to provide clothing and shoes for school children kindergarten through 12th grade was recognized and close to kids was established. With generous financial support and gifts of clothes and shoes, Haywood County school children who qualify 
can now receive three outfits each spring and fall. And folks, that's First United Methodist Church serving the least of these throughout our community. And we've talked a little bit about how we've seen the gifts in, in our lives and how we've seen these gifts affect the community. Annabelle, how has that changed your view on the stewardship and giving after seeing all these, these programs and, and these gifts in the community and in the church? So uh, seeing all the ways that this church is involved, it's definitely made me want to, to give back to the church uh, financially as I've been able. Um, I grew up going to church and knowing that you, you, you're supposed to give back to your church. I saw my parents give back to the church. And for so long, what it looked like for me was when the plate was passed and if I had cash in my wallet, then I'd give. But as I worked here and I, and I realized that my commitment to a gift, what that could do for us as we plan to reach more people, I wanted to commit to giving a certain amount um, every month. And so I grabbed a pledge card and I was starting to fill it out. And as I, when I got to the part where I had to put the amount I wanted to give, I couldn't do it. <laughs> um, I didn't feel like anything I could, I could write down at that time was enough. And so it really crippled me and really kept me from putting anything down. And so for a while, I kind of went away and was like, I can't, I just can't pledge anything because what I have is not enough. Uh, but eventually I decided, you know what, <laughs> I have to start somewhere. And so I put down on the pledge card what I said, I can give a sub shop a week. <laughs> And so I put down what it would cost me for a meal from the sub shop on that pledge card. And um, every week uh, it would come out. And as I, as I was doing things with youth and I realized, okay, maybe my sub shop meal uh, bought one of those big bags of chips uh, that we give kids at the after school program. Or maybe a few months of my sub shop meal, um, maybe that is a scholarship for someone to come on winter retreat. And for me, so much has just changed as I've realized that, um, well, first of all, giving for me became so much less of a stressful thing and something that I really, that's very joyful. And um, I see how, the, how my gift can impact uh, what this church is able to do. And so it's been really amazing for me to just trust and um, trust God as I continue to try and give more and realizing that what I can give is enough, uh, but giving's a joy now. And Catherine, you've talked about how this, these gifts have affected your, your three young adults. How has your view of stewardship changed as you've seen these gifts and this church work in your life and in the lives of your children? It has changed quite a bit. As I said, I was raised down the street and in church and I knew my, my parents Giving was a very important, important role in our family. Um, then as I started my young family, of course, I gave up my time, I guess, a little bit. Sunday school here and there. It's so important to give. You, you just do not know the number of families or lives you are touching by the, by the amount of programs that are sponsored through this church. Um, it is a joy, as Annabelle said. It's a joy to give back. I will never be able to repay what this church and community has given to my family, their time and their uh, monetary value. They've given my daughter's jobs here before they, as they finish college. And the, the blessing of that is tremendous to me um, because they're back. They're back in their community. They want to give back themselves, and so it has changed quite a bit. It's so it's such a gift to give, and you never know when your gift will impact someone that you may never even meet. And in reading the, the scripture that we've heard today, you know, passionate about this is our house. This is, these are the things that you've done for people before you are doing for you. And God, I think in reading that scripture, God calls us not to maintenance, but to mission. 
And so what, BB or mother, what would you like this church to be passionate about going into the future? When uh, we began... Am I on here? Mm-hmm. You're on. Okay. Probably doesn't matter. I'm pretty loud. When we began this, working this forum and all, and that was mentioned, I thought, it concerns me, the mothers and children that are homeless. That concerns me quite a bit. And then I noticed last Sunday in the bulletin that Becky Brown is heading up a, I don't know, what, remember exactly what it's called, but when it's a really cold night for mothers and children to come here. And I thought, this church strikes one out of the park again. But that's something that really has concerned me. And this church has stepped up. Annabelle, what would you like to see this church be passionate about in the future? Uh, so last year I had an internship uh, with, and I worked with mothers uh, who had substance use. And I realized that there are so many gaps for services uh, in Western North Carolina and in our, in our county. Um, so I would love to see FUMC support Uh, services, uh, residential program, or or other services for people with substance use. And Catherine, you've already talked immensely about your kids. What would you like to see going forward that this church be passionate about? Continue that investing in our children. I mean, when I think about little Sloan in the back, and then I think about my three kids, and they're, they're not quite raised yet, but... I don't see them dancing in the back. <laughs> yeah. um, but they're, they're, they've got a great start. And um, you've just got to invest in our children. Keep that circle going. Um, our kids today, being in the school system, oh, wow. They're faced with lots. And if we can give to them, it, just give them that stability. It can be done. It can be done. And Sarah, where do you see our church, not maintenance, but mission? As we continue to grow and to change as a congregation, it is my fervent hope that we will continue to follow the example of Jesus Christ's ministry to all of God's children, regardless, period, that we will offer welcome, inclusion, and hospitality to all who enter God's house. And may we continue to hear and to answer God's call, even when it takes us out of our comfort zone, for when we say, yes, Lord, It becomes God's will, not ours. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Amen. At First United Methodist Church of Waynesville, we answer the call. We do this by rising to the challenges and needs of our congregation and the community. Through worship and outreach, we offer spiritual and physical ministries, fellowship, prayer, and education for the transformation of the world. From out-of-state mission trips to Community Impact Day, First United Methodist Church is a go-out congregation. Following the footsteps of Christ, working hard to care for its community. We offer a food pantry for those who are hungry. We offer hot showers, clothing, fellowship, and breakfast on Saturday mornings for those in need and without resources. The Child Development Center sets the standard for excellence in preschool education. At FUMC Waynesville, we answer the call to be the living body of Christ by welcoming all, growing in faith, and engaging the world. We offer free after-school music programs to any child or youth in our community. 
There are once a week breakfast and Bible studies at Waynesville Middle School and Tuscola High School. And a free after school program for any middle school student offered every day of the school year. At First United Methodist Church, we open our campus to the community through Pancake Day, loaves and fishes, pumpkin patch, and special events like Back to School Bash. Each event offering new opportunities to serve the needs of our growing community. At First United Methodist Church Waynesville, we answer the call to be the living body of Christ by welcoming all, growing in faith, and engaging the world. During this stewardship campaign, we are asking all of you to ask yourself a simple question. What if? What if we had not bought the parking lot? What if we did not create a full-time youth ministry? What if we had not built the Christian Growth Center? What if we had merely rebuilt the sanctuary that burned down 25 years ago instead of dreaming of a new space that could meet unforeseen needs? How was your life impacted this year? Was it through a great sermon, an inspirational anthem, or a praise song? Was it your Sunday school family? or perhaps a transformative experience in your child's life? What if those ministries were not able to continue? Last year, our church asked what if in a big way. We asked what if Pancake Day could be free for everyone? We asked what if and then we hosted a meal for 3,000 people. There are what if questions God is waiting for us to ask. What are they? God's love is transformative. We see it every day. We need your help to continue growing our God-driven ministries. We ask each of you to rise up this season during our stewardship campaign and make a financial commitment to this church, its ministries, its transformative outreach, and its mission to be the living body of Christ. We are asking you to do two things. First, please make an estimate of your giving for 2020 so our church can manage funds and plan spending with integrity and responsibility. Second, please consider increasing your giving in 2020 to meet the growing needs of this community and the expanding ministry at FUMC. We understand that everyone's financial abilities are unique, and no matter what you give, the church is made stronger by you. Thank you. Before we go, I just want to say a, a word of thanks. I really appreciate those of you who shared. You've kind of opened a window and given us a glimpse of why this church matters to you, uh, the difference that it's made in your life, the difference that it's made in our community. And, you know, we hear that a lot around here, but to give us kind of that personal perspective. I, I was also very inspired by your desire to continue making a difference to keep this thing going. Uh, your conversation reminded me of uh, really the very first church, you know, in the book of Acts, Luke opens this window and gives us a glimpse of that group of people, and those people were in awe at what was happening. Uh, it said that, you know, the followers of Jesus were doing signs and wonders, and I've always thought about that, and maybe you too, like, what exactly was it they were experiencing? And when, when it says signs and wonders, you think, well, they touched somebody, and there was, there was a miracle, and they parted the waters, and somebody was healed, and so on, but um, the text that Meredith read for us so beautifully, um, you know, that's Moses giving the great commandment. Jesus talks about that a lot. Um, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I don't know if you, if you caught it when she was reading it. Uh, it's on the front of your bulletin. Um, it's like, 
write it on your hearts. Make sure that you keep it in your hearts. And when I think about this first church, um, that's, I think that's, that had to be what happened. You know, that they, this, this love of God and love for each other was just, it just marked who they were. It was burned in their hearts. And Jesus told his disciples, like, everybody's going to know that you're my disciples if you love each other. And I, I think that's the stuff that was happening. People were encountering a community of people who loved them so deeply. And so what, they, what was happening was they were gathering together in the temple. They were, they were meeting in their homes and they were sharing their food. It says they were doing so with, with glad and generous hearts. Like their hearts were full of joy. Their hearts were full of, full of generosity. And it says that they were, they were giving their stuff. If anybody anything, needed anything, they would, just, they would share their stuff with them. Um, and it was transforming their entire community. And, and I feel that here, and your conversation that you all just shared with us, it challenged me. It's like, uh, I'm asking myself the question now, how has this church impacted me? And it has in a lot of ways. I'm a different person just about every time I step on this campus. Uh, God is using our life together to change me. Sometimes I come here, and like some of you shared, um, you're a little bit broken in your life. Uh, there, there's some stuff going on. The needs that you have are relational and emotional, and you need God to touch your soul in some way. Um, but then God awakens us, and, and we meet each other's physical needs, but also the needs in our community. And so um, how, how has this church impacted me and made a difference in my life? And what kind of difference do I want to make? Um, and then kind of practically, how do I go about doing that? Uh, will you pray with me? God, as we go from this place just now, after a time together in, in worship, a time together in sharing. Uh, we just give you thanks for the ways that you have grabbed hold of us and you've done so through this, this group that's around us or th through those who have come before us. And we can see that all the way, all the way back to the very first church uh, where your love just lives in people and it just expresses itself in ways that uh, we really can't describe and our gratitude is, is deep. Um, and so we just praise you for that. We also ask that you would inspire us and that you would even disturb us so that we would have some sense of the difference that we want to make, how your kingdom can be a reality in the future. And help us to know, give us some clarity. Maybe it's like Annabelle, we can give up a sub sandwich a week and it might not seem like a whole lot, uh, but we know it's a whole lot. Uh, whatever it is that we can do, whatever it is that we can give of our stuff, of our resources, but how we can give our life to you um, and make uh, the difference that you want us to make to be the church that you want us to be. Uh, bless us, Lord. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thanks for coming today. Uh, God bless you and go in the peace of Christ.